On behalf of Milo Park and the president of the board, uh, I want to welcome all of you here. Very, very special day. And uh, very special not only for this area, but for our entire county and, and, and state. Uh, I don't know, three or four years ago, the governor was up in this area and handed him a uh, piece of paper saying, we're going to build a lot of stuff up here and uh, at Milo Park. And he's been very supportive, and we've built a lot of stuff. And today, Part of what we're going to be celebrating is uh, how to get people to and from the things that we've built uh, into other areas of the state. And with that, we've had a great working relationship with so many partners here at, at Milo Park, with our school board, our county commission, with our local officials. And it's a pleasure of mine to introduce our county commission president to you, uh, Mr. Tom Bloom, who's, who's been a great supporter of this park. So, thank you. On behalf of the Montegate County Commissioners, we are pleased to have the governor and his staff in Montegate County. I am thrilled as I look around the room to see so many individuals who are representing our community. We have legislators, we have representatives from the school system, representatives from WVU, WVU Athletics, Milan Park, community leaders, and community representatives. And that's what makes this place so special. Today, today is a new beginning for Montegaya County and the North Central Region. And at this time, I would like to introduce Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Burwood. Tom thought usually that nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you fix this? <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. About uh, 11 weeks ago or so, uh, the governor called me in and said, you're the new Secretary of Transportation. I want you to fix the roads. I want you to maintain the roads. I want you to straighten this thing out. And as I usually do with him, I said, yes, sir, I'm, I'm on it. And in those 11 weeks or whatever, we've paved over 600 miles of road in West Virginia. We've, we've ditched thousands of miles of road. We've cut the grass. We've, we've done, we've, we're working on everything he wants done, but it's, it's his direction. He's the one that, I, I tell people I got an easy job because he tells me what to do. And Jimmy Riston tells me how to do it. So that, I'm in pretty good shape. But the governor's here today to talk about some other stuff and I'm gonna let him have the floor. Governor Jim Justice. Let me tell you, this is, this is always really easy for me. And this is easy because it's a great day. It's another great day in West Virginia. And we just keep stringing them together and stringing them together and everything. And at some point in time, you know, maybe someone in the media or somebody's going to say, well, dang, you know, it's not too bad. And we are doing better. We are doing better. That's all there is to it. You know, I thank our new secretary and our new deputy secretary and commissioner. Let me, just, let me just go back just a little bit. You know, I've told you many, many, many times, I'm not a politician. I don't want to be a politician. I don't want anything. I've told you that a hundred million times. I want one thing though, I do want something. I want your love and I want truly goodness for our state. Now you're doing all kinds of incredible things up here. It's just unbelievable, the things that are going on all around the university in the northern part of the state. I mean, it's really unbelievable. But if you don't, I always term it this way. If we don't watch out with all the goodness that's happening, we'll get in our own way. And in this situation, we're in our own way. I mean, right, right now, we're in our own way. I mean, just think about it. You have this incredible aquatic center. You got all the great stuff that's going on at Milan, all the great stuff and all the potential of bringing in thousands and thousands of people and competition in the Big 12, all, all kinds of everything that could happen here. You know, whether it be a new 4-H center or extension or whatever it may be, all the other goodness plus all the stuff that you already have going on, 
and you can't even get here. I mean, that's getting in our own way. That's just all there is to it. Now let me, let me just take one second and brag on these two guys that just, Bird just came up and spoke, and then Jimmy. And it's just this, you know, if you go back to my comment about not being a politician, you know, when I drove in the door, and I keep going back to this, but, and, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, but we always need to learn from history. You know, when I'm a business guy, and they hand you a set of books, and the state is dead bankrupt. I don't care what you said. So bankrupt, it was off the chart bankrupt. Things are better. Not only better, things are remarkably better. Now, I don't need you to pat me on the back about that, or I don't need to pat others on the back about, about that. It's just fact. Now, with that being said, just think about this just for a second. You're not a politician. You're not a lifer. So you make the very best choices that you can make in filling your cabinet on day one. You know, to be perfectly honest, we, we got things happening within commerce that weren't any good. And we had to make a move. They weren't any good way beyond maybe even what maybe you know. They weren't any good, so we had to make a move. The same thing, not from the standpoint of, of stuff that was bad, but from a standpoint of philosophy in the transportation department, we had to make a move. Now, Tom Smith's a good man. Tom Smith was a good guy, thought big ideas, loved the big federal projects, loved them. But our roads were falling all to pieces and we couldn't get Tom off the bubble. We tried, my good Lord, we tried and everything. And we kept pushing, it was like pushing a rope. We just could not get there. And so from the standpoint of needing to pivot and refocus, a good man, a good man with lots of good stuff and everything, lots of good ideas and did lots of good work, but we had to pivot. We had to not only be able to continue to try to move forward with our big projects that absolutely we're doing. We didn't want to slow them down, but we had to come up with some way to find real dollars to pump into our secondary roads. Now, how'd the money come? Well, to tell you the honest truth, the money's coming because every single day we have more and more of a surplus in this state. And that enables us to do every single thing, all the good we want to do. So, at the end of the day, whether it be attacking this terrible drug scourge that's just cannibalizing us in any way, or whether it be fixing our roads, or whether it be helping our teachers, or our education people, or our state employees, or state police, whatever it may be, you can't get off first base if you don't build revenues bring opportunities and bring jobs and you see at the end of the day the way I look at it that is my job that is my sole job not sole but that is my primary job you see at the end of the day I've got to have us in a position to where we are building opportunity and building revenue and if we do then all the other stuff just works everything else works now these guys know there is no such thing with me as we'll get to that project in three months, we'll get to that project in three years, that project can't possibly be done for 30 days, there was a stoplight up in the eastern panhandle or something like that. And they called, you know, and there, there was, I don't know what happened exactly, but, but it was going to cause all kinds of congestion and everything else. And, and everybody called and said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, we can't do anything for 30 days. We can't do anything for six weeks. For crying out loud, they started calling at 11 o'clock in the morning. We can't do anything for 30 days. He fixed it at 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock that day, am I right? 5 o'clock that day, we were up and going. Now look, let me tell you. The one thing that I am, I am an impatient rascal. That's all there is to it. I don't believe in the fact that you can't get stuff done, and I don't believe that you can't work within the system to get stuff done. I couldn't be happier. 
than to celebrate that we're going to pave and, bring, and, and widen and put new guardrails up and everything else to where people can come and enjoy this incredible park and bring more and more and more goodness to West Virginia. I congratulate you from the very bottom of my heart and whether you're, you know, our, you know, senators or delegates or county commissioners and I thank all for you for all your unbelievable efforts in every way. You are the winners. Do you realize not just the winners from the standpoint that we've been able to partner together the county commission, you know, put in $200,000 and, and the DOT stepping up to the plate and we're partnering together and here we go. But you, you are almost the model in so many ways that we can learn from all across our state. For crying out loud, it's happening here. It's totally happening all over the place right here. And you know what? If you mark it down, it's going to get better. It's just going to get better and better and better. And the other thing I'm not going to do is no way on the planet. You can't, you know, these roads didn't get this way in 24 hours or a year or two. They got this way because we neglected them forever. Now we can say what we want, and this is not throwing these stones, but past governors did sell a lot of our equipment. They sold our great alls and everything else. They did. I mean, I'm not beating on anybody. And then the governor after that, we had, we had shortfalls, nonstop, cut budget, cut budget, cut budget. And before you know it, we had neglect, 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 and compounded and compounded and compounded. And you had growth and it compounded and more trucks and, and compounded and compounded. And then we, what do you got? You've got an absolute dog's mess. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. It's not easy to fix. And it takes a lot, a lot of money. But as long as we keep just pumping out and doing what we're doing and we keep staying committed to the fact that, you know, if I were to say to you, standard of life, what's the first thing? The first thing is always education. The first thing absolutely is education. People want to go where they're safe, their kids are safe, and the teachers are good, and the facilities are good. And, it's all, number one is always education, but number two is always highways. It's always roads. People don't like to go to the convenience store and get their car torn all to pieces going down to the store and back. That's all there is to it. They just don't like it and understand it. I got it. So the net of the whole thing is I congratulate them. I congratulate you guys. I congratulate everyone. You know, you're winners. You're super winners. And it's going to get better. And the last of my last, I'd say, is just this. And I don't want to get into all the specifics and everything because the media will go crazy with me. <laughs> but let me tell you, you have, a, you, have such, you have something that has never, ever in a billion years happened in West Virginia. Now, whether you love him, or you hate him, it doesn't really matter to me. You know, you have a governor that is really close and on speed dial with the President of the United States of America. You have a governor that doesn't have to go through 50,000 committees that can actually talk, and you have a president that wants to please his buddy in West Virginia too. And his buddy absolutely wants nothing but more and more and more goodness for West Virginia. And the president knows that. And the president knows his buddy doesn't want anything for himself. Nothing. Nothing. It is unique beyond belief. And absolutely, as God gives me breath, we need to take advantage of that situation because it is so solely unique and it has never happened before and it'll never happen again. You know, it'll never ever happen again. And so there's the, my ending comment would be just this, I know what's a coming. I know what's a coming. And we're nowhere close to the end of the rainbow. We came from 
bankruptcy to greatness today. But we're at the, the point that I'm trying to make that I want to see happen so badly is we're right on the cusp. We're right on the cusp of really, really knocking it out of the park. You know, we got it knocked out of the park on us the other day in the ball game. <laughs> but we need to knock it out of the park nonstop on lots and lots and lots of times. We know we're a state that's blessed by incredible goodness and people and seasons and proximity and natural resources and there. We got all that. We got every bit of that and everything. But we're also a state that's been deprived. We've been, we've been, you know, pushed back and, and we've been spoon fed a little bit while a lot of other states got a lot more. Right now, right now is our opportunity to be at the head of the food chain, at the head of the line, right now. Right now is when we go. We've already dug ourselves out of this hole and got ourselves going. Right now is when we take off. It's getting ready to happen. Better buckle up. It's going to be a heck of a ride, I can tell you that. That's all I got. You know, I congratulate you again and uh, glad to be a part of it, and I thank you in every way. <laughs> if there's anything I left out or anything you'd like to ask and everything, somebody ask those guys, because. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, like, we'd like to invite everyone, because I know you're heading up to Westridge. We have some major announcements there. I think this is just a beginning, as we said, um, we have to start somewhere. I do want to thank uh, my other county commissioner, Sean Sakura sure. and Ed Hawkins, who did this. We are pleased that you came up here. Uh, they know I will be <coughs> on them and constantly make sure, but I think this is a community effort and a mm -hmm. North Central effort saying that we want our roads moving as quickly as our economic progress. And we couldn't do it without everyone in this room. So we want to thank you and look forward to seeing you at 2 o'clock up at Westridge. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me just say one other thing. We know we're behind. We know, in all fairness, they know, right here in Mon County. Now, there's other counties in the state where things really, 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 really tough. But we know, we know we're behind right here. And we'll catch up. We'll catch up. We know from the standpoint of uh, all the goodness that you're, you've been doing and you continue to do and everything. If, I don't know how to say this. If the ladies will please forgive me, we got to get our ass in gear. That's all there is to it. And we're in gear. And we're gonna make we're gonna catch up. It's always to it. So and that's I think what we wanted to hear, and we yeah, really appreciate no, that comment. Thank you now. Thank, thank y'all. Thank y'all.